Hi guys, in this video today, let's talk about what to expect when you arrive in Canada at the airport as a permanent resident. I'll talk all about what you need to prepare, approximately how long it takes and how to make your arrival as smooth as possible. And in this video, I'm going to use the example of Yule Montreal Trudeau International Airport. So if you're arriving at a different airport in Canada, things might be just slightly different. Just a few days ago before posting this video, we arrived from Japan with an AC or Air Canada 006 in Montreal. Montreal Trudeau International Airport. We arrived at around 5 p.m. in Montreal and we still had around three hours until our next connecting flight to Toronto which was around 8 p.m. plus. So we finally got off the plane after a super long 12-hour flight and in a moment I'm going to walk you through step by step how arrival went, what documents we needed to prepare, what we needed to do upon arrival. But before I get into those details, first I want to talk about two really important things connected to vaccination and the Arrive Can app. Now the first question that you might have at this point is do I need to have COVID testing before I enter Canada? And the simple answer to that is only if you do not qualify as fully vaccinated. So in other words, if you qualify as fully vaccinated, you do not need to do COVID testing before you enter Canada. Note, however, very important that these are the rules according to the current regulations and as everyone knows, these can change. So I'm not going to go into further details about vaccination requirements in this video. So if you want to know more about that, I'd strongly advise you to check out the official website instead of just relying on the information in my video. And I will put the link to that website down here. The next important thing to talk about is the Arrive Can app. And it's pretty straightforward. Or is it? Now, here are a few important things about the Arrive Can app. So you download the Arrive Can app, but note that you'll only be able to start filling out the form 72 hours before your departure time. But don't worry, it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy to fill out. You simply fill out your trip details, such as your flight number, your destination, etc., your vaccination certificates, and there's also a custom declaration. And after you've completed the full form, you will receive a receipt from ArriveCan which also has a QR code. So it's important that you save this receipt or you print it out. I've just saved it on my phone and have it ready at arrival at immigration. The great thing is that in case you're traveling with family, as in my case, there were two of us, myself and my husband, only one of us needed to fill out the ArriveCan form. So in our case, my husband was the one who filled out the form and he added me as part of the family family traveling with him so we only had one receipt. So it worked well for the two of us but I'm not sure how many people you can add exactly to the Arrive Can app. So back to the airport. Once we got off the plane we followed the signs to international connections and that took us about five minutes until we got to the immigration checkpoint. So here you can see a bit of the Yule Montreal Trudeau International Airport but pretty soon I will have another video specifically about the Montreal Airport and when that is up I will put the link up here or you can also check out my playlist on travel in Canada and find the video there. So continue to follow the signs pointing to connecting flights and make sure that you go the right way. So here for example if you go straight you will get to US connecting flights instead but we are turning right because our connecting flight is to Toronto a domestic flight and when in doubt just ask one of the staff there to make sure that you're on the right path because I saw a few people who went the wrong way and they noticed it much later later on and they had to go all the way back and lost a lot of time in the process. So here we are at immigration. It looks like a long queue but don't worry it actually went really really fast. And by the way guys here I turned my camera off because I didn't want to get in any trouble. As you know usually cameras and video taking are highly discouraged or even forbidden at immigration checkpoints. But don't worry I'm gonna explain in as much detail as possible what you need to do at the immigration checkpoints and what to expect. So we had our passport, our boarding pass, our PR card and we also had that arrive can receipt which I talked about earlier. And the whole process went very fast. We arrived at the large immigration hall and like at the grocery checkout we immediately got a spot at one of the checkout check-in booths or kiosks if you will and the process went very fast. They had all the instructions on each of the booths and it was really straightforward and very intuitive so you would immediately know what you had to do. 
Keep in mind here that even though you're traveling as a family, still each of you will need to complete this check-in process and this is what happens. So the first thing that you will need to do at the kiosk is to scan your PR card. Remember that this video is about people arriving as permanent residents. So if you are not a PR yet, if you're arriving here as tourists on work permit, etc., there might be a slightly different process. In that case, I believe the identity that you will need to scan would be your passport. But going back to the PR card, one mistake that we made in the beginning was that we scanned the front of our PR card and the machine, of course, would not respond. So what you will need to do is actually to scan the back side of your PR card. I'm really trying to hide all my personal details, but yeah, you get what I mean. So you just lay the back of your PR card on the scanner and then the machine will hopefully <laughs> recognize your face. And after that, you simply need to pull down your mask and you need to step forward so the, that the machine can scan, can read your face. And in case the machine does not immediately recognize you, then one of the problems might be that you're not close enough to the machine, in which case you will just need to take half a step forward or so and get closer to the camera. So after that, it should be no problem. The machine reads your face, recognizes your face. And after that, still at the kiosk, what you will need to do is to fill out a simple customs declaration. So there will be a form similar to the one in the Arrive Can app that will ask you questions like are you bringing any firearms etc. You know the usual. So you just confirm everything and you complete the process and after that you will actually get a receipt. So the machine, the kiosk will print out a receipt for you that has your picture and your details on it. And keep in mind again that each of you, each traveler will get their own receipt. Now with this receipt and still with your passport, your boarding pass, and your PR card, you step forward to the Canada Border Service Agency desk. Yes, I think I got that right, CBSA desk. So there we simply showed our documents, our passport, our boarding pass, PR card, and that receipt that we just got from the kiosk. And at that point, the officer also asked us a few simple questions. In our case, the question was about what items we purchased abroad or what items did we receive as gifts overseas. So we simply answered that question and we were let through. And remember, this is the process for people with qualified vaccination. So if you do not have qualified vaccination, then there will be a slightly different process, but I am honestly not familiar with that. So I'm not going to go into further details. So guys, if you have qualifying vaccination, you do not need to take a COVID test prior to arrival in Canada, but there is such a thing as random COVID testing at the airport. And in fact, right after you pass immigrations, there is a small booth. I think it's called health services or health something uh, booth where you might need to go in case you are selected for random testing. So a bit about this random testing thing. After you filled out your form in the Arrive Can app, you will receive an email from them and they will in that email explain you briefly about what to expect when you arrived in Canada. And one of the things that they say in the email is here in this part about arrival testing, it says on arrival to Canada, you may be required to take a COVID-19 arrival test. So it means that it may happen and it might not happen. So the chances are low, but just be prepared that you might be selected to do random COVID testing. But as we were not selected for testing, we just proceeded and went ahead. So we went on proceeding to the gates and on our way to the gates, which took us only a couple of minutes, we were stopped several times, I think two or even three times by staff who wanted to again see our boarding pass and they simply just scanned it. I think the purpose was just to make sure that we actually had a valid boarding pass and that we were also heading into the right direction because they were asking us where we arrived from and also where we were headed to, what our connecting flight was. So because of that, have your boarding pass ready. After we passed immigrations, I thought we were done and I just put the boarding pass back in my bag, but then I figured I had to take it out several times. So after passing immigrations, don't immediately put the boarding pass back in your bag. Just hold on to it and have it easily accessible. So we finally arrived at the transit hall and overall, I must say the whole arrival process went pretty smooth. I didn't look at the clock, but I would say that roughly from leaving the aircraft to passing immigrations until we arrived at the transit hall, it took us no longer than 30 minutes. So pretty good, I must say. So as we arrived at the transit hall, as usual, the first thing that we would do is look 
for the gate from where our connecting flight would depart from. That was AC-427, which departed from gate 49, which was really nearby. So the moment we knew where our gate was, we could finally relax and we could enjoy the rest of our two plus hours just exploring the airport, getting something to eat, etc. But that is a video for another time and that will be up hopefully pretty soon. So stay tuned for that. But for now, in case you're just about to depart from Canada, specifically from Toronto, YYZ Pearson Airport and you're curious to know what to expect at the airport. I actually departed from Pearson YYZ Airport about three to four weeks ago from the time of making this video. I talk about the check-in process there and approximately how long everything takes. So if you want to know more about that, then check out this video over here. As always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.